Stalker is usually about playing with what you can scavenge and playing with whatever guns and suit your playstyle, but some players prefer to know beforehand the best gear in the game and try to get it early and be overpowered. I have made a build or loadout that covers some of the best gear in the game for you to go and find if you want to get it early and be as strong as you possibly can from the start of the game. I've covered armors, weapons and artifacts. We're going to start with armors and there are really only two armors in the game you need to play with your playthrough. The best armor in Stalker 2 is technically the Liberty Exoskeleton you can find later in the game in Pripyat. Yes, the Diamond Exoskeleton offers slightly better physical protection, but you can max out your physical protection using artifacts and so it's not really an important factor when choosing an armor. It's all the other things like artifact slots, elemental or anomaly protection and carry weight increases. Now technically you can get into Pripyat early and I have a video on that if you want to check it out, but it doesn't let you upgrade the armor at the vendor until later in the story and with no sprint there's no point in having it. As you can see here I'm trying to upgrade this earlier in the game and it doesn't let you do it until you reach a certain part of the game for whatever reason. But this is the armor you want to get as soon as you can get it and add sprint to it as it's definitely the best one. Until then though the best non exoskeleton armor in the game and one that you'll probably end up using for most of the game is the Siva eye suit. The reason? It's easy to get from the start of the game. It's one of the best non exoskeleton armors in terms of stats. It can have five artifact slots, which is very important. It's also got double lead containers, so you can equip legendary artifacts without needing to use your other artifact slots to reduce radiation. Other good contenders are the SSP 100i survey, but it's kind of bugged. It doesn't really show up until a certain part of the story, if it even shows up at all, and it doesn't really work when you upgrade it either. So the Siva eye suit is the way to go. This can be found here in the Yantar region, and you can get it as soon as you leave the lesser zone for the first time. You can upgrade this at the mechanic in either Yantar or Pripyat, and as for the best upgrades, you can try to upgrade them all if you want, but the one that you definitely need to do is the lead containers, and you can see the location for the blueprint for another lead container here in the video if you want to know the location of attachments and other upgrades for anything else in the video, I have it covered in different videos on my channel. I didn't want to go over them in this one because it would double the length of the video. But the important one is to have lead containers upgraded in two different slots for this and an additional artifact slot which will increase artifact slots for the armor to five. What about the artifacts then? If you have five slots available, there are really only five artifacts you need to use in the game. Thunderberry is your best friend. It gives you maximum endurance and reduces the need for energy drinks. Of course it adds maximum radiation, but you have lead containers on your armor now and you need to equip these in the slot of your armor with a little green glowy bit at the bottom so you don't get irradiated. How do you get Thunderberry? Well, it drops randomly from electric field anomalies like this one in West of Garbage. The anomaly randomly generates when you get to around 150 meters of the location, so you can make a save 150 meters away, run into the anomaly and find the artifact. If it's the wrong one, you can reload and try again. It took me exactly 28 minutes to get the Thunderberry in this method. And that should really be the average for getting any of the legendaries. Now for the second artifact, I don't actually have it because it's currently bugged, but it's the compass artifact. Spawns usually in gravity anomalies, the ones with the whirlwinds and gravity bubbles. There are plenty of these dotted on the map. Unfortunately, I tried to farm this for over four hours for the video and I eventually gave up because it's obviously not going to spawn, but and there are other artifacts in the game that I don't have because they don't spawn either. And I guess this is just another one, unfortunately. If you're on PC, you can just give yourself the artifact if it doesn't show up, but I'm playing on Xbox. Anyway, this gives you maximum protection, but also maximum radiation. So again, you can equip it if you have it in your second lead container slot. And that will give you more than enough protection all the way through the entire game. Next, the weird nut, absolute must have. It automatically cures bleed, the most annoying thing in the game. If you try to do the final five missions without it, you're pretty much bleeding all the time. And so this is without a doubt the most useful of the artifacts. This is found in the fire tornado in the cooling towers.
The weird ball will reduce damage received from gunshots, especially when standing still. This is found in the Bulba Anomaly in the Lesser Zone. Lastly, since we can't really equip much else without being irradiated, I have equipped the Weird Flower. It's located in the Poppy Fields in the Lesser Zone, and it reduces the range at which you're attacked by enemies, and it comes in very handy. These then are the five best artifacts in the game. You don't need to have anything that reduces radiation because you have your Siva Eye Suit, and you don't really need to equip any other artifacts because the elemental resistances from the Siva Eye Suit are some of the best in the game, excluding a couple of the exoskeletons. With this armor and artifact, you are pretty much ready for the end game. You don't even need an exoskeleton, as this armor is more than enough to beat the game. But what you will need are some good weapons. The Bucket S2 SMG with a silencer is a great close range weapon you can find as soon as you reach garbage. It makes short work of any human enemies and is decent against more heavily armoured foes, although you have other weapons for that. Equip it with a silencer and extended mag to make it as good as possible and fully upgrade it at the mechanic if you can afford it. With the gun you can make light work of any human enemy in the game, even in the later stages of the game like here in Pripyat. For longer ranges, you can use what I consider the best weapon in the game, the Dnipro, the most powerful assault rifle in terms of stats, and it's also very fun to use. And if you're just looking for one gun in the game to use, this is the one you should use because it's obviously good against human enemies, and it's very powerful against any of the mutants and things that have heavy armor. It can shoot longer ranges easily as well, and it's also very easy to hit fire with it, so it will make your playthrough pretty easy if this is the only gun that you use. You can find this one atop of the cooling towers at the top of the map. For longer ranges, I prefer the Mark 1 EMR. There are some more powerful sniper rifles, but this one is strong enough to kill enemies and you can find it pretty easy and early with a scope here at the military barracks. If you're able to get to Pripyat and you can get into here early if you jump over the trains, you can find one with a scope and a silencer in the buildings behind the kindergarten. Lastly, having a shotgun is super important in the game because you really need something with a lot of penetration and be able to shoot things very close range for non-human enemies like bloodsuckers and other mutants. The Saiga D12, while not the most accurate or fun of the weapons to use, I personally think, but it is very powerful, has some of the best damage and penetration, has an incredibly high fire rate, is by far the most quick reloading of the shotguns, that's why it should be your secondary gun no matter what main weapon you decide to use. It makes short work of any of the tougher game enemies, even this guy here can be killed fairly quickly, and the more common enemies like Butters stand no chance. 
The only issue with the gun at the moment is four of the blueprints for the gun are currently missing or bugged, so you can't really upgrade this a whole lot. But despite that, it's still the most powerful of the shotguns. And the great thing about shotguns as well is they're probably the most efficient for using as little ammo as possible, so which is always handy. So guys, that's it for this video, how to get some of the most powerful gear, including weapons, armors, and artifacts in Stalker 2. And I think this build is pretty much as strong as you can get. You can always tweak a few things here or there. You don't have to use the exact weapons I chose, although the Saiga D12 and the Dnipro are technically the best weapons that you can get in terms of stats. But the game is really designed for you to play through however you want. You can even play through with the worst possible armor and just a knife if you take your time. But you can also go overkill and use all the stuff I've showed you in the video. It's really your choice, but the choice is there for you. Guys, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.